my name is Daisy. I'm the CEO and founder of Banish. And today I'm gonna be talking a little bit differently. I'm gonna be sharing with you the two secrets that you need to know if you want to get an ad crack. Like, yes, that ad crack, that line down your ad. Now, I'm gonna do a disclaimer. Having an ad crack doesn't change who you are. Being fit or fat or skinny or curvy or whatever doesn't make you any different of a person. So don't think of yourself as any better if you have a six pack or if you have an ab crack or whatnot, it doesn't define you. I'm sharing this because it has always been super hard for me to get an ab crack and I actually figured out what the secret was and I actually saw results. And nope, you don't need to buy anything in order to achieve this. A little bit of background, I have a pretty muscular body type. I gain weight on my stomach. So my stomach area is where I gain weight. People can gain weight, you know, in their thighs or hips or arms, wherever, but I tended to gain weight in my stomach. And I always tried like trying to figure out how I can get like a nice flat stomach and have an ab crack. It wasn't until I did these two things. So the first thing is intermittent fasting. So basically intermittent fasting is when you go over a long period of time without eating. So what I would do is I would go about 16 to 18 to even 20 hours without eating on some days. And the reason why I did this is because I actually would get a ton of migraines. I've been suffering with migraines all my life and it got to the point where if I didn't eat every two to three hours, I would develop a migraine. And the biggest revelation for me was when I was on this flight, a United flight from LA to New York and they didn't give me any food on the flight and it was like a six, seven hour flight and I literally had a migraine at the end of it because I didn't have any food and I was like, this is ridiculous, Daisy. Like you should be able to go without food for six hours and not develop the stabbing migraine. So I actually wanted to do intermittent fasting so I could get rid of my migraines. So basically what intermittent fasting does is it kind of forces your body because you don't have any food in your body for an extended period of time to burn fat instead of carbohydrates. So usually when you're eating like the three meals a day or whatnot, your body has enough to burn the carbohydrates, but if you don't have any food in your body, you have to burn the fat. So that's kind of what I did. I know some people, they do the 16-8 method and that's, I think, what I did as well. I wasn't too strict about like how far apart my eating would be. I would just try to eat past 1 p.m. So I, no matter what time I ate my last meal at, I would try to not eat breakfast, not have anything in the morning except black coffee, and then eat my first meal at 1 p.m. So in the very beginning of my intermittent fasting journey, it was incredibly hard. I had a ton of migraines, a ton of headaches. And so what I kind of did was I kind of just extended. So like, for example, I would eat breakfast, right? At like 8 a.m. or whenever I wake up. So I just try to extend that an hour to 9 a.m. Then extend that hour to 10 a.m., 11 a.m., noon, all the way to 1 p.m. And by extending that, I didn't have like the drastic headaches that I would when I would skip meals. That took about two weeks for me to fully adjust to skipping breakfast and just eating lunch. Now, before doing intermittent fasting, I had to eat something when I woke up. I was starving by the time I woke up. By training my body to burn fat instead of carbohydrates, all I would do when I wake up is make a cup of coffee and that's kind of what got me through. In terms of diet, I wasn't super particular with you know, what I was eating. I know a lot of people wanna go keto or they wanna go vegan or they wanna eliminate processed sugar, processed foods, all that kind of stuff. For me, I think my schedule is really busy so I can't really think about what I'm gonna eat all the time. So intermittent fasting was really great because I could worry about one less meal I had to prepare for the day. I remember before intermittent fasting for breakfast, I would, it would always be a challenge waking up in the morning only having like 15 minutes to figure out where I'm gonna go for breakfast or what I'm gonna make for breakfast. And so not having to worry about one meal a day was actually really, really, advantageous for my productivity. I wouldn't really cut out any food. I still had carbs. I sometimes would still eat McDonald's french fries. I would sometimes eat in and out Like I would still eat all the normal foods. I just wouldn't have breakfast and I would try to eat my first meal at 1 p.m. Sometimes I would extend it to 2 p.m. or to 2.30 p.m. After 2.30 p.m. I felt kind of wheezy. I felt kind of lightheaded. The longest I didn't eat for was about until 6.30 p.m. and that was awful. I developed a huge migraine after that. I wouldn't extend it past about 1 p.m. After doing the intermittent fasting, I did notice that my stomach was getting a little flatter. I did notice that I was dropping some weight. So I went from about 137 to 132. So I was able to drop 
five, six, seven pounds just from intermittent fasting and without changing really anything else in my diet. The second tip, if you want to get the ab crack, which I think is super, super important, is that you must do high intensity training or high intensity cardio in the mornings on a completely fasted, on a complete fast. So what I would do is when I would get up, I would make coffee and then I would head to the gym and I would do an hour of like soul cycle or spin classes, or just an hour of very high intensity cardio, trampoline, something like that. So before doing this whole thing, I would do sometimes bar classes. I would do weight training. I would do strength training, but I actually stopped doing bar. I stopped doing all of those like weight training classes and I would only focus on super high intensity cardio. Now, if you guys have done Soul Cycle before, there's this one instructor, her name is Jamie A and she is the absolute beast. Like in her classes, I feel like I'm about to die and pass out. And because of that, she really pushes you. And in some of those high intensity interval training classes or those cardio classes, even after showering at the gym, even after you know putting my clothes on, I would still be sweating even 45 minutes after the class. Like that's how intense these classes were. So I would go on a completely fasted state. I didn't have anything to eat except the coffee in the morning and I would work out really, really hard. And then after that, I would drink a ton of water after. And basically I was done working out at about 11, 11.30 a.m. I would have about an hour and a half and this was pretty much torture, like the couple of hours after my workout where I couldn't eat until 1 p.m. So that was really hard in the beginning, but after a while it just became a routine and within I would say a month or two I began to see results when you're working out so so intensely without having anything any kind of food in your stomach you're really burning the fat and for me my fat was dispersed on my belly so it really burned that belly fat and then over time I saw my belly just slim down and I eventually began to see the ab crack and the line which was Super cool because I didn't know I had that. So it really doesn't have to do with you doing more crunches. That's not really gonna help you get the abs. It's really about trying to burn the fat there, which you can only do through high intensity cardio and through eating right. A few other things. So people ask like, when was, would be your last meal of the day? My last meal of the day would be eight or 9 p.m. I wasn't super strict about it. So I had a seven to eight hour eating period. And people ask me, what did you eat? You know, I would eat just pretty normal stuff. I wasn't too strict on my diet, but um, sometimes I would go to Chipotle and get a burrito bowl and you guys know that those things are humongous and I would eat that over lunch and dinner and then maybe dinner have some like fruit or salad on top of that and that is basically like 1300 calories 1200 calories because when you only have two meals a day instead of three each meal can still be 600 calories but you're eating all together 1200 calories, right? Plus you're doing high intensity workout and cardio, which is like a negative 500 calories, which puts you at a 700 calorie like thing a day, which is definitely not recommended. <laughs> definitely not recommended. And um, don't take my advice for like being a nutritionist or stuff, but I wasn't hungry. I was totally fine. I would say my only thing was sometimes I would be so hungry before I went to sleep because right after eating at 1 p.m. your first meal, you get hungry immediately at like 2 or 3 p.m. because your body is like, yo, like we totally skipped a meal. So it took me a while to get used to that. And sometimes close to bedtime, like even at 11 p.m., I would get really, really hungry and I would keep some cereal bars or you know something near my bedside because yeah, it was really, really hard for me to sleep at night. So for me, what was easier was to eat as close as possible to bedtime so that way I could sleep well. I tried doing the whole intermittent fasting where I would skip dinner and then go to sleep, but I could not sleep on an empty stomach. My stomach was grumbling and rumbling and I was having a hard time sleeping. So after doing that for two to three months, I began to see an ab crack, flat stomach, all that kind of stuff. I did lose weight and I ended up being about 131 pounds, 130 pounds, and I'm five, four and a half, which I think is a really good height weight ratio for me especially when i have a very muscular body and i would just end up doing a lot of working out a lot of cardio a lot of muscle tone and it was really really simple for me by doing intermittent fasting because i just wouldn't need to worry about a meal that i needed you know to prepare and i didn't have any strict dietary restrictions you know i could just live my life it was super easy the only bad thing was like i would go to a lot of like business conferences and business events and they always have free breakfast and i was like oh i can't eat this because i'm 
you know, I skip breakfast and all that stuff. But other than that, like there wasn't like any strict limitations. And again, there would be some days where I would have breakfast, like if there was a really great like pancake event or, you know, good waffles or, you know, some kind of good breakfast food. Of course I would splurge and do that once in a while, but just I think consistency is really, really important. So if 90% of the time you are not eating breakfast, if you are creating that 16, 17 hour window of where you're completely fasting and then doing high intensity cardio over that, you're gonna see the ab crack and you're gonna see results. So thank you all so much for watching. And again, having an ab crack, having a six, six pack ab, having a flat tummy doesn't make you any better or worse than anybody else. It just means you have an ab crack and woohoo go you, but it doesn't make you you, you know? So I want people to remember that and not kill themselves over trying to achieve this thing. This is simply what worked for me and the two secrets that really changed my progress in getting a flatter tummy. So thank you all so much for watching. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye. Hey soldiers, it's Daisy, founder of Banish. Did you like this video? Please give it a thumbs up and comment and subscribe to our channel. Thank you and don't forget, Banish, we got your back. Bye.